This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Tuesday, April the 2nd, 2019. It's the birthday of Charlemagne, sometimes known as the Father of Europe. He's the great Frankish king who united Western Europe under a single banner. He was born in 742 A.D. and was crowned famously on Christmas, A.D. 800. That crowning spawned the Carolingian Renaissance in which intellectual and cultural activity electrified and Europe went from the Dark Ages to the Christendom of the so-called Early Middle Ages. This is when Alcuin of York led the effort to standardize for the first time the Vulgate Bible. Before now, there was no official text of the Bible at all. There was just a book list. The church exploded with activity, and for the first time in history, a truly Christian culture can be said to have existed freely, with royals, clergy, traders, artists, guilds, and peasantry coexisting in a genuine Christian harmony. Now, it wasn't utopia at all. This was the time of the Vikings and the Saracens. It was without a doubt a difficult moment to be alive, but it was the first genuinely Christian society in world history. Charlemagne died in 814 AD after almost 46 years on one throne or another. His renaissance lasted 75 years or so more and set the stage for the so-called High Middle Ages. It's also the birthday in 1602 of the venerable Mary of Jesus of Agreda. As the name implies, she lived and died in Agreda in Spain and was the abbess of the Immaculate Conception Sisters there, a.k.a. the Conceptionists. She was a prolific writer with 14 complete texts, the best known of which is The Mystical City of God, which in some ways is a biography of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the result of years of supernatural visions. She's probably most famous for her bilocations. This is where it gets really interesting. The Jumanjo Indians lived on a giant swath of what is now southwest Texas and into Mexico. They had been asking the church for missionaries for a while and had just been low on the list. So Mary of Jesus starts to bilocate there and to minister to them. And she does this frequently for three years and then on and off for another six until finally the Franciscans get around to sending some missionaries. She was widely reported and seen by Indians and later by Franciscan missionaries in the area who came to know her as the Blue Nun. She died in May 1665 at her monastery in Agreda. It's also the birthday in 1805 of Hans Christian Andersen, the great Danish story writer and poet. He wrote an astounding 3,300 stories, including some of the best-loved fairy tales ever written. The Emperor's New Clothes, The Little Mermaid, The Nightingale, The Snow Queen, The Ugly Duckling, the Little Match Girl, Thumbelina, they're all his. It's hard to believe, but his work didn't sell very well at first. And But rather than redirect himself to other styles, he stuck with it. Now, a lot of his work is clearly directed at children, but the dark themes and the macabre gore also made him popular with adults. His non-fairy tale works go even farther, considering those darker, heavier themes. Modern readers tend to believe that children should be protected from violence and horror, but only about 75 years ago, war and death were commonplace themes in, in children's literature. Even Disney movies from the 30s, 40s, and 50s contained pretty serious tragedies. Anderson's Northern European sentiment about fairy tale children being punished with horrific deaths was nothing particular to his time or place. Modern children's movies are once again showing the willingness to confront children with painful realities. Think about the tragic opening montage of the Pixar film Up or the death of Hero's brother in Big Hero 6. Anderson's work is broadly influential and most children know his stories even if they don't know his name. He died in Copenhagen in 1875 at the age of 70 and is remembered in that city and beyond. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.